evening. I Rapstein with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up and this wrap up is for Monday the 19th of August 2024 and I can tell you it's great to be back. I caught COVID, went for that uh, race in uh, Indiana that my friend was taking a Lamborghini to set a world track record. He didn't do it. Another competing car did though. They hit 261 in a and a half mile, standing stop to half. You ever done it that fast? I got a chance to do it in a Porsche Turbo. As sick as I was, whoa. <laughs> it, it, it's something when you can just keep your foot to the floor as fast as you can go, and if, if the half mile ends, you take your foot off. It's not as easy as you think. When you take a look at the stock indices, they've been on a tear to the upside. It's like I got ill and they decided to go up. What happened, and I think you realize this, is the market got all nervous about the unwind trade out of Japan. The markets cratered off of that news. The markets rethought it and then shot up. And in fact, in the NASDAQ, we went into a 10% correction to the downside, and we're now fully out of it. This is one of the quickest coming out of a correction since, I think, 2011? It's unbelievable how fast it happened. We're talking just days, and it's day after day that we've been going higher. You gotta be a little careful when that happens. I um, always have one eye closed when I see this, if you will, in a market that's in August 19th, the end of the summer, a lot of traders taking off, Europeans out to finish up their summers, and the market just going vertical price moves. Just something you wanna keep your eye on. You know that this Friday we've got the uh, Jackson Hole meeting, so that's going to be important. In terms of data coming up, let's see if I can get us anything right here. Uh, yeah, I think this is it. Red Book Group's going to update their weekly U.S. retail sales data on Tuesday. That's tomorrow at 7.55. API numbers will come out with the private estimate of the gasoline additions or withdrawals from stocks. And on Wednesday, we're going to get the notes from the last FOMC meeting. So I think this is all pretty important. You put that together, you try to come up with a game plan. So maybe we should just go to the charts rather than me talk so much about things because we haven't done that in a while. I decided to cover GM because they're laying off a lot of people and they're trying to get back to a profitability stint plus. You had a vertical price decline and you're now moving in a V pattern back to the upside. You've developed a pattern of higher lows and higher highs along the way. That's an uptrend. The green line represents the 100-day moving average of closes. The gray line right here is the 200-day and the red is the 18-day moving average of closes. So starting Last week, the market was able to finally get back over that 18-day average, and it's since moved up to the 100, and the Bollinger Band is probably going to be an area it has big trouble with at 46.50. But the trend is up, no longer down, and that's the important thing to look at. You are overbought. This is the slow stochastic reading. And whenever one of the numbers is over 70, and they're not both going sideways over 80, it's overbought. You have an overbought market. Admittedly, it's been a, a powerhouse. But look where it stopped. Come on. Do you ever look at moving averages and understand them? 200-day moving average is almost a one-year moving average. And when you get down to those, the markets like to often, the first test is support, or for where up here, it'd be resistance. The market fought a battle. Once it got under the 100-day average, you can see where it fought, fell apart, and it's retesting that. That's why I think between here and the upper Bollinger Band, you're going to have some problems, and you'll probably see some liquidation by longs finally in the market. That's what I'm expecting. Might as well look at Rivian since we're looking at GM. Still coming down. Didn't like what I heard while I was ill with COVID that... Um, they have to stop production of some Amazon uh, fleet trucks because they're short of parts. You don't make money being short of parts. I didn't realize auto manufacturers were short of parts anymore, so I got an education here. As long as this stays like that, you can still work lower, but I really think long-term, the 1222, 1236 area, traders are probably gonna not only cover shorts, they'll probably throw some money at the market and just forget that they own Rivian at a price like that. Wouldn't surprise me. 
in CrowdStrike. It certainly looks like the worst is behind the market at the, uh, let's call it the 200 level. You've recovered $66. That's a big recovery from that low point. Remember, this was over a $400 stock that fell in half. So you get these big moves that can go up or down. Let the market digest all this for a little bit. The lawsuits aren't over, you know that, but their business is good. And as you can see, the market is overbought. Could it rally a bit more? Yeah, but the Bollinger Band's right here at the 270, 270 area, just about five and a half dollars higher. In uranium, while I was gone, the market, as you know, it hit the lower band, began a correction, and this is what we call a bear market rally. Bearish because the market has been under the 18-day average this whole time, and all you did is rally back to it. In the process, you got out of being oversold. That's all that I could say about it. I can't say it's turned the corner yet. I'll have to look at the weekly charts, and that's not showing it to me just here. Dell looks like it's through with this massive price decline as well. Look at the first real nice bounce that you've had in the market. And I would call this the first real nice bounce after this prolonged break. How far can it go? Well, it's already overbought. I don't think it's going a lot further than this. I look for a battleground to shape up in the 10360 area where it tries to find support. Maybe it has to spend a bit of time consolidating. In Lennar, well, how are they going to do as a home builder? You know, interest rates have been falling. We've got mortgages down about six and a half, six and five eighths, trading right in that range now. The market has been going sideways under the 18-day average. Today, it stepped up and over it. It is in an uptrend until prices come back under this low right through here. And that low is one, let's get to it exactly for us, 168.20. So I wouldn't be surprised if the pros are nibbling on ways back down to 170, 266, risking a few bucks. Can you get back over time to 180, 20? That's probably the overall objective. And the home builders have had a bear market rally, just like uranium. It back up to the 18-day average where it's fighting a battle right now. So we'll have to see how this works as a group as well. When we look at the financial uh, service sector, up and away. This market's been in a vertical move. I wouldn't chase it. Overbought, could hit the upper Bollinger Band. Obviously, in looking back at it, what I said when we went down here, and if you don't believe me, the videos are there on YouTube. I said when you the first challenge of a 100-day average in a Bollinger Band is often where the pros are going to cover their shorts. You were oversold down there, and in looking back at it, not bad advice. I didn't see a reason to buy it. I'll wait for my turn. It, it comes. XLI is in an uptrend, but a bit overbought here. Could reach for the 129 zone, but I'd be a bit cautious up here. Any markets that are overbought, you want to give them a little chance to digest this comeback that they've all had off the washout, off of the carry trade news that we had a while back in Japan. Uh, look for resistance at the 100-day average. It's been showing that that is a zone that it likes to fight at. Let's see if that holds up that way. And in the gold, you know, I've talked about the $2,600 an ounce barrier. Been doing it for a long time now throughout a good part of the summer, and we're certainly on our way. I do have clients uh, that have followed my advice in GLD long in my subscriber service, and they are holding on. It was easier to get long this than it was the futures. Sometimes that's how it works, but that's why I like using futures and ETFs. You get the best of both worlds. Uh, it's different ways to play it. I have told some to take partial profits up here, hold the core position, but on pullbacks, be ready to buy and add to that position again. Same in the silver. Now that you're up to the Bollinger Band and overbought, I can make that argument. Even copper. And I do not understand why coppers come back up. It has not gotten a lot of bid. It is not seeing China consume a lot more. I am not convinced that this copper market's anything but short covering so far, but I don't know more than that. When we go to the interest rate sector, well, you know everything's going to hang this Friday on what uh, happens at Jackson Hole. The market's anticipating 
a dovish Fed, dovish other central bankers, been climbing up along the way on that. Dollar falling on that news and the euro up and away on that news. So I'm glad to be back with all of you. Want to remind you, it's a good time to take advantage of our free offers Access the Slin Trading Platform is the charting service I use, so you can try that out. You can receive our trading kit. It's got everything in it if you want it. Then you can try our QT platform. If you want to do your own price counts, that's where they're at. Modern Trader, Profitable Trading Strategies, Volumes 1 and 2. A whole host of things to choose from. You go to our website, irapstein.com. Under free offers, top left, you'll see this page. Give a click to the icon. You choose on the blue what you'd want. And at the bottom of the page, you put in your name, your email address, and so on. We get it all sent out to you. Couldn't be easier than that. You can also take your cursor, and if you move it to the top up here, you'll probably see an icon. Give that a click. It's another way to do it. I'm Ira. I'll catch up with you all in the morning. Good to be back. Voice not yet there, but getting towards it. You take care.